CDMX, Ciudad de Mexico, is the sprawling capital and most populous city of the largest Spanish-speaking country in the world. Our home for four weeks was in Colonia San Rafael, a middle-class residential neighborhood. The relatively quiet, tree-lined streets were filled with 19th century buildings. In the 1940s and 50s, it was known as the Broadway of Mexico. While there are still plays to be seen, its theatrical glory days are far behind it. Funeral parlors are now the grandest businesses in the area. There was lots of fantastic food in our area. Many taquerias. and bakeries. A grilled chicken place. Some wonderfully historic places. And a place that cranked out tortillas all day. They even let me see their operation from the inside. Our area was very walkable, but the Mexico City metro system is fantastic. The second largest in North America after New York City, the stations are open, clean, and, if not during rush hour or major holidays, not crowded at all. The bus system is even more extensive. With dedicated lanes everywhere we went by bus, both the metro and bus systems use the same prepaid RFID card that can be purchased at major stations and topped up at nearly every station. As with the metro, off-peak times aren't crowded, and major buses have dedicated sections for women and children. There are interconnecting and outskirts bus routes with smaller, older buses, but we never took them. Mexico City is very bike-friendly and skate-friendly. A network of rental stations covers the city. One day will cost around 10 US dollars, all managed through an app, and it's cheaper per day if you rent for three days or a week. Dedicated lanes are all over the city of different levels depending on the size of the road. though sometimes they're shared with buses, which is less than ideal. On Sunday mornings, major roads are closed off for foot and pedal traffic, which makes a wonderful way to spend a few hours. Just a few blocks south of us, the soaring Monument to the Mother hosts frequent community events, as does a very nice public park that backs to the monument. A few blocks east, the Plaza of the Republic honors the first Mexican Republic of 1824. You can ride an elevator to the top or go down to a small museum for the Mexican Revolution. Also nearby, on Avenida de la Reforma, a small memorial honors 65 miners who were lost in a 2006 methane explosion. Parallel to Reforma, Calle Rio Lerma not only bears the Vic's family name, but also has a great collection of restaurants. It's a wonderful dining street, day or night. 
about a half hour southwest by bus at the end of Avenida de la Reforma. Chapultepec Park covers a massive 686 hectares or 1,700 acres. With miles of walking trails and lots of waterfront picnic space, you could spend days here. Perched high on Chapultepec Hill, Chapultepec Castle was briefly home to the 19th century Emperor Maximilian of Mexico. It's an American taste of Habsburg European opulence and houses the National Museum of History. About an hour northeast, by bus and 15 minute walk away, the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe is not only one of the most significant sites in Mexico City, it's one of the most important religious sites in the world. An estimated over one million visitors come here every month, making it the most visited Catholic site in the world even more than the Vatican. It ranks as the third most visited religious site and in the top five tourist sites of any kind. In December of 1531, 10 years after the Spanish conquest of the Mexica or Aztec Empire, a young woman reportedly appeared to a nomadic peasant on the side of this hill. Speaking to him in his native Nahuatl language, she called herself Mary, mother of the very true deity, and asked for a church to be built at the site. The first chapel was built atop the hill in 1666, and a larger basilica was started below the hill in 1695. It has serious and visible sinking issues in the foundation. The modern basilica was built in 1974 to accommodate the massive number of visitors the site was attracting. The primary feature of the basilica's main altar is an image of Mary that supposedly appeared imprinted on the cloak of the peasant who saw her. This image became a key part of Mexican identity when it helped spur nationalism during the 1810 War for Independence. The image is even featured in a chapel at the Notre Dame de Paris. To the far south of the city, and pretty much the opposite of a holy site, the Embarcadero at Xochimilco is packed to the gills with colorful party boats. The usual tour combines unlimited tequila and beer with optional mariachi serenades. In canals where frequent boat collisions are all part of the experience. But it's also the only place we found where you can experience a remnant of pre-colonial Mexica life. The land here was all raised up from the lake using a thousand year old technology. Farms were planted and houses were built on these small islands with trade all conducted on the water. The heart of Mexico City, El Centro, the historic district, is full of beautiful buildings dating from the 17th to 19th centuries. including some marvelous old hotels. One of which was featured in a James Bond film. The central Plaza de la Constitución, commonly called El Socolo, is the largest plaza in Latin America and the main venue for massive public events. On the east side of the plaza, the Mexican National Palace currently serves as the president's residence and offices as well as housing the federal treasury and national archives. On the north side, the Metropolitan Cathedral was finished in 1813 after 240 years of construction. 
The massive building is very complex, with multiple naves and different architectural styles, multiple ornate altars, and two of the largest 18th century organs in the Americas. Next to the cathedral, the ruins of the primary Mexica temple, El Templo Mayor in Spanish, were discovered in 1978. Once over 200 feet high, the upper levels were scavenged by the Spanish to build their cathedral. The Zócalo and surrounding buildings were built over the most sacred parts of the Mexica city, Tenochtitlan. For more details on this, and the general history of Mexico, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss out on our next episode.